Hi everyone, Joe Odin over at All Seasons RV in Streetsboro, Ohio. Tonight I'm going to go ahead and start the first segment of our water and plumbing seminar. Um, the first segment tonight is going to focus on uh, the freshwater system, basically what your freshwater system is, how it works, how you can maintain it, and some tips and tricks along the way. So first of all, to understand how your freshwater system works, you got to know what it's made up of. So there are two primary systems in the freshwater system on a trailer. So there's your city water, and then there's your freshwater holding system. The city water system is basically uh, just the female end of a garden hose on your city water inlet on the outside of the trailer that you hook your hose up to, and then plug it directly into a spigot at the campsite. The freshwater system, however, is that onboard holding tank that you can fill up with water that's then paired with an on, on demand water pump that is activated when you open up the faucet switch on the front here. Coming back to it, um, talking about how your freshwater system works. So, like I said before, you have your city water inlet where you plug in at the spigot that's at the campground. And you also have your freshwater holding tank, which is accompanied by a onboard on demand water pump in the trailer that's activated when you open up the spigots on your trailer. So now knowing that we can kind of dive into some tips and tricks and things you want to keep in mind while you're using the water system in the trailer. First things first is going to be what kind of hose you want to use. So you want to make sure that you're always using an FDA approved drinking water hose, not just your green water hose that you leave rolled up in the garage for half a year or anything like that. You want to make sure it's FDA approved for drinking water, which is very easy to figure out. If it is, it's either white or blue. So your standard green or yellow garden hose, gray garden hose, that's not going to be quite good enough for drinking water. The reason being is that has an EPDM rubber lining, which can give off carcinogens. Um, with an EPA certified drinking water hose, it's either PVC or TPO lined down the center of the hose so you don't have any carcinogens rubbing off in the water or anything like that. So just bear that in mind. Um, a lot of times campground owners can actually fine you or just completely confiscate your hose because of the steep penalties they can face if you are not using the proper hose at their campground. Um, another thing you want to make sure you're utilizing, whether you're filling up via your freshwater inlet or your city water inlet, is an inline garden hose. So reason being, this is going to filter out any kind of bacteria, cysts, ammonia, heavy metals, um, bad odor, bad taste, bad smell, any of that good stuff. Um, you want to make sure you're always using some kind of filtration when you're hooked up to your city water connection, but always when you're filling your fresh tank, make sure you're using an inline garden hose filter so none of the garbage that's in the water ends up getting into your fresh water system. Some units do have a uh, water filtration system built in, but that's not going to filter the water that's going into your fresh tank. So as an extra step, you can go ahead and filter the water that's going into the fresh tank by putting this in line on your garden hose. Or if you're going to hot campgrounds, you're a traveler, you go here one weekend, there one weekend, this is going to be your best option just because of the portability. Um, but we do also offer some different solutions for more of our permanent campers, which I'll talk about here as well. So back behind me, I have our dual stage water filter system. Um, this is going to be more geared towards someone who's more of a seasonal camper at a campground that has pretty bad water um, with like a real bad rotten egg smell, a lot of calcium, things like that. Nice thing about this is you can pick up a two pack cartridge replacement. You typically only have to replace it once a year and it does have garden hose fittings all in one. So this is basically a residential style water filtration system. You're going to get the same quality, but for your RV, you're not going to have any reduced water flow. This is rated for up to seven gallons per minute, which is much more than you'll need for your RV, unless you're using every single spigot all at one time. And like I said, these cartridges are very easy to find, very replaceable. And you can even, depending on your water, there's many different cartridges that'll fit in here. So you can change, you know, the intensity of the filtration that you need based off of your specific campground. And also next to that, we have a portable water softener. Um, this is for folks who are going to campgrounds where they know that the water is just absolutely full of iron, very, very harsh metals as well. Um, and this works just like the water softener in your home. 
So basically what you do is just hook it up to the water, run everything through it. It'll soften your water automatically. And when it comes time to go ahead and backwash it, all you have to do is open the one valve on the side of the splitter here, pour a little bit of table, table salt right in the top of the unit right here, replace your cap, and then let it cycle for about three hours. And what that'll do, that'll backwash all the heavy metals out, the salt will go ahead and corrode that and flush it all out, and then you're good to go. Typically you want to do that about once a month, um, just because obviously you're not using the amount of volume, the type of water volume that you would be like you would with your home water softener or anything like that. Now getting off the subject of filtration a little bit, um, I'm going to talk to you a little about water pressure regulation. So a lot of times campgrounds to compensate for the high volume of water that's needed to supply all the coaches, they'll, they'll jack their pressure up to 80 to 110 PSI, which really isn't the best thing for your camper. The ideal setting to have your camper at is between 40 and 60 PSI. So I've got two little devices here called water pressure regulators. One on the left is a little basic, the one on the right is a little more fancy. Uh, this guy here, this is just your factory preset water pressure regulator that screws right into the spigot and then you hook your hose onto it from there. Um, this is going to preset the water to 40 to 55 psi no matter what. This guy here, you can see has a little pressure gauge on it and an adjustment screw. You can set the water pressure to your desire. So if you want to have it maybe at like 30 psi for some reason, or if you need a little bit more water pressure for cleaning dishes or something, you can turn it up to like 60 psi and still be able to see on the gauge to make sure that you're within the uh, safe parameters for your camper. So like I said, you typically, you don't want to get above 80 PSI um, just because at that point over, over a long period of time, if you have that kind of pressure on your lines, it can start to cause issues with like your O-rings and your faucets and around the fittings and things like that. So you just want to keep that in mind as well. Now, as far as your water pumps go, um, 99% of campers have a 12 volt onboard water system or water pump. Really the only time you'll use the water pump is if you're pumping from your fresh tank. You're not going to utilize it if you're hooked up to city water. If you're hooked up to city water, you're working off the pressure that the campgrounds well provides. So you don't have to have the switch on for your water pump if you are hooked up to city water, only if you're filling your fresh tank. But on most water pumps, you want to make sure you're checking, especially if you're getting very low water pressure out of your water pump or anything like that. You want to check it at least once a year. It's this little strainer here. And this just screws off the bottom. And it's got a little screen in it to catch debris so it doesn't fill up in your water lines and spigots and faucets. So like little particulates like sand and things like that. So if you ever notice that when you're using your water pump, if you have like a very slow pressure rebuild or anything like that, get under that bed or behind that cabinet wherever your water pump is and make sure your uh, strainer is not dirty as well. All right, the last subject I'm going to go over with you guys is hot water tank maintenance. Um, this is very, very imperative to the health of not only your hot water tank, but your water system in general. So one of the biggest causes of that awful rotten egg smell that you get in a camper from the water system is sulfur dioxide that's building up in the bottom of the hot water tank. So depending on where you're located and what kind of filtration system you're using, um, if you get a lot of heavy minerals building up in that tank, they're going to calcify in the bottom of that tank and make a very thick, viscous sludge at the bottom, which then reacts with the metal in the tank itself and creates sulfur dioxide, which gives off that horrible rotten egg smell. Now, the best thing you can do to avoid that situation is get yourself one of these right here. This is a hot water tank rinser. How it works is typically in the spring and in the fall, what you want to do is go ahead and drain your hot water tank out via the drain plug on the outside. Hook this up to your garden hose, and then you can actually stick this inside of your tank. There enough to fit in before, and you can still spray it around, spray it around the bottom top. And you'll see with the water that's being flushed out of it, you'll see the particulates and the gunk and the sludge and everything resting or coming out of the bottom of that tank. That's the best thing you can do to make sure that you're combating that awful smell. Um, and that's, that's the number one cause it right there. So it's something as simple as this uh, twice a year. I mean, it's, it's well worth it. 
Um, on the subject of hot water tanks, most hot water tanks do have what's called an anode rod, and that is this guy right here. What this is a is a magnesium rod, and what it does is it lets um, the heavy metals in the water, like copper, aluminum, magnesium, things like that, they attack this instead of attacking your steel lining of your tank and rusting it out. So typically with the anode rods, depending on the quality of the water where you're at, you're going to replace it every one year to every three years, just depending. Um, right here, I have an example of a completely toasted uh, anode rod. You'll see there's absolutely no meat on it. Everything's completely worn away down to this little steel rod. And then right here, I get a lot of these where people come in and think they need to replace this. This one's still probably got about half a season of life on it because we can just start to see that little rod at the bottom. When it's about up to here, that's when you want to think about changing it. But in its original state, it's going to look like this. It's going to be the same diameter all the way. It's not going to be pitted up at all. It's going to be completely smooth. Now, that's only if you have a suburban hot water tank. So if you have an Atwood hot water tank, the tank is actually made out of aluminum, which is a much, much tougher metal to corrode than the steel tank you find on a suburban hot water tank. So that's one less thing you have to worry about if you have an Atwood hot water tank. And the best way to tell is by looking at your drain plug. If you have an Atwood hot water tank, it's going to be a half inch plastic plug. If you have a suburban hot water tank, it's going to be a three quarter inch steel plug, which is actually the end of the anode rod itself. And then um, lastly, um, really the only other thing I have to tell you about on this segment would be the freshwater fill spout. I got a little ahead of myself in the beginning, but this right here, this makes it a lot easier to fill your fresh tank. A lot of times your typical garden hose end won't quite fit in to the side of the or into the freshwater fill port all the way, which can result in you ending up wasting a bunch of water on the ground, potentially getting water into the camper if you have it spilling all over the side excessively. But this guy right here just slips right into that.